And we're back now with New Jersey Governor John Corzine, Ohio Governor Ted Strickland, and with us from Columbus, Ohio this morning, Governor Mitch Daniels of Indiana. He is in Columbus because the state airplane uh, got a crack in the windshield this morning. They had to make a landing in Ohio, and through the courtesy and the uh, expertise of the, New J of the Ohio uh, Highway Patrol, we got him to Columbus and to the studio there. So, uh, uh, Governor, uh, we're glad you're there with us, and uh, so we'll start from there. I want to start with uh, Governor Corzine, because the numbers from your state, uh, Governor, give us an idea of just how serious the problems are that governors are facing these days. Uh, you expected your state sales tax to bring in $8.6 billion, I believe, and it looks like it's going to be about $653 million short of that. State income tax is going to fall $145 billion short of expectations. $145 million, not billion, or we've got I'm a sorry, real problem. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> $1 billion, <laughs> $45 million, and you're facing a $2.8 billion drop in budget revenue, which right. just gives people an idea of what a sour economy will do. That's about 8 or 9% off of what we thought we were going to have. Yeah. So you're going to get some uh, money in the uh, president's stimulus package. I take it that New Jersey's going to take the money. I think we'll probably uh, take that and make sure that we're educating our kids and providing health care uh, as best we possibly can to the citizens of New Jersey. I think the president has done the right thing. Uh, I think it saves jobs. I think uh, some of the other expenditures that are a part of the program on uh, highways and bridges and the energy infrastructure of the country. I think we're going to create a lot of jobs, about 100,000 in New Jersey, uh, out of that program. Combined with the things that we're already doing in the state with regard to our infrastructure and schools, I think it's actually going to make a big difference in the economy. Governor Strickland, uh, you've got some big troubles out there in Ohio, especially unemployment. Uh, I take right. it you're going to accept the stimulus money. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I believe Ohio is going to get about $8.2 billion out of this package. Uh, we will use those resources to make sure that college tuition doesn't explode, that we are continuing to invest in elementary and secondary education to provide quality child care for our kids. Um, we need these resources, and I'm, I'm very happy that the Congress uh, and, and the President is providing this resource to our states. Uh, you know. This is uh, a very unusual time in the history of, of Ohio and in the history of the country. And um, this is not a normal economic up and down cycle that we're seeing. It's historic, unprecedented, and I think it's necessary and appropriate that uh, the administration and the Congress is helping us out in these ways. Governor Daniels, I guess uh, one new expense you've got out there uh, in Indiana, of course, is you've got to get the state airplane fixed. So that'd be. <laughs> but you yeah, are in a. It's not a much just a job, it's an adventure. Yeah. Uh, there you go. You're in a much uh, different position than some of these governors are because you actually have a balanced budget out there in Indiana. But I take it. Uh, that might not last long because unemployment uh, is is just ballooned out there in recent months, has it not? So I take it you will be one of those uh, taking the stimulus money? Sure we will. Yeah, we are in a little different situation. Um, we've come actually uh, from, we were bankrupt when times were good, and have come to a position of all debts paid and budgets balanced. and. Uh, a pretty strong uh, reserve, but it won't last if the uh, erosion of the economy continues uh, at the present rate. So we will take it. We will try to spend it prudently and wisely. Um, in our case, we'll try to invest it for the future of our state. Uh, we don't have the holes to fill that other states do, but uh, that doesn't mean that we can't, uh, I hope, use it to leave permanent assets behind, whether they're um, roads and bridges or better prepared teachers. Uh, so that we're a stronger Indiana when this is over. Governor, let me ask you, do you find it somewhat hypocritical that some of the Republican governors, I know Haley Barber uh, down in Mississippi, Bobby Jindal in Louisiana, just to name two, are saying that they, uh, they're they opposed to this and uh, they don't want this money. Uh, so they're at least saying they don't want it, but some other governors are saying, well, we're opposed to it, but uh, we're going to take the money anyway. Uh, uh, what's going on on that? Well, first of all, I've studiously stayed out of the debate about the merits or demerits of this package. Uh, I think my job is simply to use these funds, which are a fact of life, uh, for the best uh, interest of our state and its future. 
But you know, out of, let's have some respect out of fairness for a very legitimate point of view. There are some very legitimate concerns about this bill. Um, and it's uh, massive amounts of spending on things that have nothing to do with stimulating the economy. Uh, massive amounts of money that everyone understands cannot possibly be spent for two or three years. It smuggled in some very dubious uh, policy, welfare without work and a bigger government takeover of health care. So uh, I just think that uh, people in good conscience, my own Senator uh, Dick Luger is as bipartisan and thoughtful as any member of Congress and he couldn't bring himself to support this particular bill and so I, I think we ought to simply you know, move forward and each of us as governors anyway make the best decision we can for our own state. How bad uh, governors is this situation now? I mean do you see any light at the end of this tunnel? Well I think as history has shown we always get through um, tough economic times. Sometimes it takes longer than one would like to see for that problem and you see unemployment um, get to levels that are unacceptable and the foreclosure issue which you were talking about gets uh, more burdensome. I think most people think we're going to be into 2010 before we see actual a turnaround in the economy. Matter of fact, uh, I think most everyone that I talk to is now stretching out their expectations on when you'll see a turnaround in the economy and I think that makes it even more important that the federal government, which has the ability to finance uh, uh, these deficits, which states and, and our, our uh, cities and local governments don't have the capacity, it's absolutely essential that we take those steps by the federal government to stimulate the economy. And by the way, some of this, about one third of it's being done with tax relief. You know, we're putting money into the pockets of uh, middle class families, we're helping uh, families send their kids to college, we're doing all kinds of things to try to uh, stimulate individuals, uh, to stabilize the, un the, uh, the uninsured, the, the people that are unemployed, and then we're making these long-term investments which create jobs. Governor Strickland, what's the big problem out in Ohio? Is it unemployment? Is it uh, these foreclosures? Uh, what is it that... Uh, the foreclosure problem is a huge problem in Ohio. Uh, of course, uh, unemployment is growing uh, and we expect it to continue to grow over the coming months. So all of it together, I, you know, I repeat what I said to you, Bob, just a few moments ago. These are unprecedented circumstances. We have never been in circumstances quite like this, perhaps ever in the history of our country. A convergence of economic factors have come together. The housing crisis, the meltdown on Wall Street, uh, our financial institutions under stresses and strains. Um, that's why I believe the response of the federal government is so critically important. We cannot allow ourselves to disinvest in our kids, to disinvest in education, to dismantle uh, those uh, responsibilities that we have as governors that will enable us to overcome this recession and move into recovery. What, what if one of the auto companies goes under? How will that impact out in your state? Uh, hugely, hugely. And it will not only impact uh, the big three, it will impact all auto companies, including Honda and Toyota and all the others, because they have the same supply network. And these, this supply chain is very fragile, uh, and if it uh, starts to collapse, it could have a cascading effect that could, quite frankly, cripple an industry that has been so vital to the, to the economy of our entire nation for so long. So it's very important that the auto industry get the help it needs to survive. And I, I've had officials from the Honda Corporation come to me, say to me, Governor, we're not usually in the business of advocating for our competitors, but it is so important that the auto industry and the big three be preserved. Otherwise, uh, the economy of this country will suffer perhaps irreparable harm, uh, and, and we just cannot let that happen. Uh, uh, Governor Daniels, let me ask you, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger of California said today that uh, what, what President Obama needs now is some teammates, and he's pretty much signed on uh, to, the, uh, to the president's plans. Now, a lot of people in your party are raising questions about it, uh, saying no, voting no. What do you think Republicans ought to do from here on in? Well, they ought to follow their conscience. You know, again, I've uh, not seen it as my role in any way to uh, criticize. We all hope that the, the president will succeed. This country needs this president to succeed, and I hope fervently that he will. Um, as I said before, whether it's the stimulus package or the uh, 
uh, auto situation you just talked about. Um, I certainly understand why people uh, who have to vote IRNA in conscience cannot bring themselves to support some of these things as presently constituted. You know, I don't know a single Republican who didn't really want to vote uh, for a stimulus package, doesn't want to see the auto industry get back on its feet, but uh, I'm also not going to criticize those who uh, have misgivings or can't come to a positive conclusion on these particular bills. Well, I have about uh, 20 seconds here left. When do you see this turning around, Governor? Anytime soon, or is it going to be a year or so? Are you asking me, Bob? Yes, sir. I would, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'll, de I'll defer, defer to Corzine, my uh, Wall Street uh, uh, expert. Uh, I, th I think we all uh, understand this is probably going to be uh, worse before better and a long siege, but this is a great economy. Uh, the American economy has been resilient and surprised the skeptics over and over. It's going to do that again. All right. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank each of you for thank coming you, by this morning. Uh, not very good news here, but at least maybe we kind of uh, laid out what, what's ahead.